The most common symbol in the world of Islam is the crescent. It is seen atop minarets, mosques, postage stamps, and the flags of Muslim countries. Some Muslims will argue that it is merely pointing to the days of the Ottoman Empire when it was popularized. Critics of Islam will often make the claim that it ties Islam with a pre-Islamic pagan deity, a moon god. Religious symbols usually have some historical significance, as in the symbol of the cross seen on Christian churches, which obviously has something to do with the crucifixion of Christ. In order to wrap one's mind around the meaning of these symbols, it is often necessary to dig deep into the history and archaeology. Both the Bible and the Quran refer to Abraham as a key character of their origin. The history of the Quran, however, dates only to the 6th century after Christ. Its references, though claimed to be a revelation of the prophet Muhammad, it is clear that his information came from much earlier religious traditions. Manuscripts of the Tanakh, or Old Testament of the Bible, as well as the Gospels, predate Islam by hundreds of years, and the archaeological discoveries validate many of the ancient stories recorded in those religious texts. It is claimed that Abraham migrated from Ur in Mesopotamia, in the lower Euphrates River Valley, north to Haran, then eventually south to Canaan in what later came to be called Israel by his ancestors. In Babylon, there is record of numerous gods, but in Haran, there is a well-documented history of the worship of a moon god called Sin. A contemporary of King Cyrus, who recorded some events on what is called the Cyrus Cylinder, was a king named Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was the father of the Babylonian king Belshazzar, who the Bible portrays as seeing the famous writing on the wall regarding future events. Now, Nebuchadnezzar recorded some events himself on some clay cylinders, which were found in 1854 by J.G. Taylor at the ruins of a pyramid-like ziggurat in Ur. Others were found in 1881 by a Syrian archaeologist at Sippar, near the present city of Baghdad. On these cylinders, there is record of Nebuchadnezzar doing construction work on the Temple of Sin in Haran as well as Ur. There are many references to the god Marduk and Sin, the luminary of heaven and the netherworld. According to the late archaeologist William F. Albright and the translations by A. Leo Oppenheim, this moon god was glorified by Nebuchadnezzar wherever he went. He traveled for a time south to Tima in Arabia where he beautified the city and elevated the moon god Sin. Much of what Nebuchadnezzar built was later destroyed by King Cyrus, who was friendly toward the Jews. But fortunately, for the sake of history, these clay cylinders are quite revealing regarding what was going on while Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon from 556 to 539 B.C. References to the crescent moon is recorded in the Bible story about Gideon as well. In the book of Judges, we read that Gideon rose up and killed Zeba and Zalmunna and took the crescent ornaments which the kings of Midian wore, as well as those on their camels' necks. That's in Judges chapter 8, verses 21 and 26. A separate book of the Bible, Psalm 83, further reveals how the Arabs and the Assyrians strove to destroy the nation of the Jews, and Zeba and Zalmunna are again mentioned. Thank you.